If interest rates are higher today than what they were, and they continue to stay high, that's going to hurt some banks too. Like we saw what happened with Silicon Valley Bank. There's got to be other banks that are holding on to like commercial real estate uh, loans and assets. What happened to Silicon Valley Bank? I said it was going to happen years before it did. I didn't single out Silicon Valley Bank. I just went over the problem that the Fed had created for the banks. And, you know, to my knowledge, nobody else was, was pointing this out. I mean, maybe people thought about it, but I didn't hear anybody speaking about it in any kind of public way like, like I was. But so Americans were out there refinancing their mortgages, serially. Every time the rates went down, they refi, they refi, they refi. I did it myself. I have one mortgage on one property that I have, and I'm at three and three eighths. Now I probably could have refinanced it again and gotten even below three. I just I, I didn't I didn't I missed that last wave. But I was down at three and three eighths. So Americans kept refinancing their, their mortgages. They kept saying this is great for the economy because now Americans have really locked in these low rates. This is good because it frees up money. Now, you know, if I reduce my mortgage payment by maybe a thousand dollars a month, well, I have a thousand dollars a month for food or you know, vacation or whatever, right? I have all this extra money to spend because I got a really low mortgage. And they say, hey, this is good for the economy. Well, what I was saying for years was that this is a ticking time bomb for the banking system because the banks are stuck with that paper. And I said, so for now, as long as the Fed's got rates at zero and these banks have mortgages that are three, four percent, all right, they're making money because they've got a low cost of money. But I said, what happens when the Fed has to raise interest rates above the level of those mortgages? That means the banks are losing money on every mortgage that they've written. And that is the case that they're in now. I mean, just about every mortgage is a money loser for the bank that holds the paper. And to the extent that they need to sell that mortgage into the market, because their customers want their money back for whatever reason, they're going to be selling at 20, 80 cents on the dollar, 70 cents on the dollar, 60 cents on the dollar. Most banks are actually insolvent. If they had to sell all their whole to maturity assets, they'd be insolvent. And so I pointed this out years and years ago that we were creating a time bomb. Uh, and now as a result, our entire banking system is basically insolvent. And if the Fed raised interest rates to the level they need to be, we would see that because we'd have a lot more failures uh, than you know, the ones that we had a year ago with Silicon Valley, Signature Bank, and you know, a few others. Uh, because I think all the banks are in the same predicament. I think it's like you know, the subprime crisis. I mean, initially, you know, the Fed said that was contained. You know, well, well, it was maybe contained to planet Earth. It wasn't really contained. But at the time, I said, that this was the tip of the iceberg. It wasn't contained. It, it was just that it showed up in the subprime market first because that was you know, the weakest link in the chain. But you know, eventually, all the mortgages would have a similar problem. And that's what happened. I mean, some of the banks that failed a year ago, they were just the weakest ones. They were the ones that you know, had the most amount of their deposits yanked and they were exposed to these loans. And it's not just mortgages, it's treasuries. Banks are losing a fortune on their treasury bonds. They were lending money to the government. They were buying these long-term treasury bonds with a 2 or 3% coupon. And that was fine when they borrowed from the Fed at zero and loaned to the treasury at three. But now that they're borrowing from the Fed at five and they're stuck with 3% paper, they're losing a lot of money. So if we break that down, because I think there's a lot just in that. If I'm a bank and I lent you money to buy a home for let's say three and a half percent, but now mortgage rates are close to 7%, double that. You're saying that because I've already issued that loan, you're only paying me back three and a half percent. I'm losing money or I'm underwater as the bank on that mortgage because right. interest rates and, are higher today. And let's say I went to sell that mortgage. If, as the bank. If current mortgage rates are 7% and I've got a mortgage that's three and a half percent, the only way I can sell that is if I discount the mortgage by a large enough number so that the new buyer gets a 7% return on the money. And so that means that I can't sell the mortgage for 100 cents on the dollar. Maybe 
the mortgage was for 500000 but in order for the yield to be uh, 7%, and I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a bond calculator, so I'm not doing this exact, but let's say in order to get that yield, the most I can sell that mortgage for is $350,000, right? Well, that means I lose $150,000 on the transaction. Well, these banks are highly leveraged. I mean, they've got you know a tiny amount of reserves. So if they take that kind of haircut on a bunch of loans, that could wipe out all their capital. And I think that's one of those things that it isn't a problem until it becomes a problem. Because, well, if a bank is underwater, you can be underwater in your home. It's not a problem unless you can't make your payments. It's yeah, not a problem well, until know, you have and a what sign. happens with the bank? Let's say I've got a $500,000 mortgage that I can only sell for $350,000. The bank is not required to write down that asset on its balance sheet. It can just claim, well, I'm going to carry it at $500,000 because I'm going to hold it till it matures 25 years from now. Well, that may be your intention, but you may not be able to do it. If there's a run on the bank, uh, you can't say, well, we're sorry, we're holding our mortgages to maturity. No, if your depositors decide they want their money, you got to sell that hold to maturity asset, and then you're going to get what it's actually worth. And if you know all these banks have been living in a financial fiction because they haven't marked those assets to market, and now all of a sudden they have to sell them. Well, the banks are immediately insolvent. But in the case of mortgages, I, at least in that instance, if it's a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage, hopefully the home is worth let's just say six hundred thousand dollars. But I think it's even worse in some commercial real estate instances where you have an office building that is a ten million dollar mortgage at three percent, where the building's only worth five million dollars now because it's vacant. Yeah, well, because it's a very different situation. So in residential real estate, the banks are just losing money on every mortgage they have, not because their real estate has gone down. In fact, their real estate has gone up. They're losing money because uh, interest rates have gone up and, and the value of those mortgages that they own have crashed. And that also creates an incentive for the borrower to stay in the home. The banks would love these homes to be sold so that the mortgages would be repaid. But the homeowners, they don't want to sell these homes because they don't want to repay these mortgages. They want to keep these mortgages because it's very cheap money. Um, but the commercial real estate is a completely different ballgame. Their real estate prices have crashed. And in um, the commercial world, you don't have 30-year fixed rate mortgages. I mean, most of the commercial mortgages are three, five years, maybe seven, 10 max, right? So these loans are coming due and the borrowers don't want to roll them over or can't even roll them over because the collateral has lost so much value. I mean, if I borrowed $100 million to buy an office building that's now worth 75 million or even 50 million, the smart move for me to do is just walk away, just like, you know, People did uh, on their residential homes during the uh, 2007, eight, you know, bust. And the banks are going to lose a fortune on those commercial loans because commercial, commercial real estate has gotten killed uh, from a number of factors. I mean, one is rising interest rates itself means commercial real estate is less valuable because it's valued like a bond. You have a cap rate and the lower the interest rate, the more the property is worth. And so when interest rates went from zero to 5%, that automatically meant that commercial real estate values came down quite a bit. But then you had two other things that happened. One, for the retail sector, you had a real nightmare because so many people started shopping online over the last five or 10 years that a lot of these stores are not you know, selling enough because their customers are shopping on Amazon. Um, also, what's happened you know, ever since a COVID or you know the George Floyd protests is crime has skyrocketed in uh, a lot of these retail outlets. So their their losses due to theft have gone off the charts. Um, and so a lot of these retailers they just want to shut down their operations. You know they don't, they don't want these stores anymore because they can't make money. Uh, the police don't enforce the laws. Their insurance rates have skyrocketed. So you have lower sales because of co online competition. And then a lot of your stuff is just getting stolen by 
uh, by people who you know, are emboldened by the lack of legal enforcement. Uh, and so this is killing the, the real estate market for uh, retail, you know, shopping centers, uh, strip malls, you know, whatever, you know, just stores. So that's one part of the commercial real estate. The other part is office buildings. So office buildings got clobbered because so many people are working from home. A lot of that started from COVID. So I'm a company and I have, let's say, an office space and I have all these desks and cubicles and offices and maybe I have enough space for 200 people, but now only 20 or 30 of them actually show up for work. The rest of them are at home. Well, I don't need all that space anymore. A lot of businesses are deciding they don't need any space. Meanwhile, you had a big bankruptcy of WeWork. They had rented all sorts of space, which is now on the market for sublease. Uh, and so it's a disaster there. Uh, so prices have collapsed and the banks are holding all the bad paper. So this is much worse, I think, than 2008 for the banks. No, you know, because in 2008, commercial real estate wasn't a problem at all. It was only residential. And the banks were only losing money on the mortgages that went into default. Today, they're losing a fortune on commercial real estate and they're losing money on every mortgage that's current. All the mortgages that are paid, that they're, that they're being paid on, those are the ones they're losing on. So, so it's so much worse, yet nobody understands it. Wow. And Ken, do you think that that banking crisis could then trickle down to home prices? Because I think banking crisis, at the end of the day, doesn't really affect the average person, unless, of course, there's a bailout. Um, but it becomes a bigger issue if home prices are falling. Now that affects the average American. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, home prices could eventually fall, certainly in, 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 in individual markets. But what's keeping home prices from falling is the fact that so many Americans have locked in these low rates and they don't want to move. They don't want to sell. Uh, and so that's keeping the supply off the market. And so that makes it harder for people who want to buy homes because the people that own them don't want to sell them. You know, and, and if you're building a new home, it's unaffordable because the construction costs are very high. And then once it's constructed, you got to borrow money. Now, the, the home builders have been buying down the mortgages, um, but that, in effect, reduces the price that they're getting for their homes. So I'm not really sure... You know, how much margin they make on these homes when they've got to buy down the mortgage. 